This bureau was made right after 9-11. We're ready to move at any moment. Were you surprised when you were asked to lead the Counterterrorism Bureau? You're the first woman to do so. Yes, I was definitely shocked when I was asked. I was completely honored. Assistant Chief Martine Matarazzo took over as the NYPD's lead terrorism fighter four months before COVID-19 shut the city down. This past April, she mobilized her team to Sunset Park after 10 commuters were shot on the N train. That morning when that incident happened, it was all hands on deck. We wanted to identify that individual, see where if they had a vehicle. Frank James, 62, was caught within a day and later indicted on federal terror charges. Frank, you have anything to say? His racist rants found on YouTube. Why do you do it? The investigation benefited greatly from a vast network of cameras that feed into the NYPD's Joint Operations Center. When the Lower Manhattan Security Initiative started after 9-11, the NYPD had access to about 3,000 surveillance cameras. The program has evolved over the years to now include more than 50,000 cameras from around the city. We'll be able to integrate your cameras into our system. Surveillance played a big role in Chief Matarazzo's first major response in late 2019, the stabbing of five Orthodox Jews during a Hanukkah celebration in Monsey, New York. The suspect was tracked to Manhattan. Uh, our partners up there, they were able to get the license plate of the uh, perpetrator. The plate followed 30 miles from Monsey over the GW Bridge to Harlem. In the 21 years since 9-11, the one fatal act of terror in New York City happened on Halloween 2017. Oh, my God. When Saifulu Zaipov, originally from Uzbekistan, mowed down eight people on West Street, six of them tourists, with a Home Depot truck in the shadow of the Freedom Tower. But dozens of plots have been thwarted in two decades. Every day, uh, our intelligence bureau is analyzing online threats. Zaipov had pledged allegiance to the Islamic State, ISIS. Somebody could be radicalized overnight. All of the roughly 1,000 cops in the Counterterrorism Bureau are trained in long guns, important if they need to confront an active shooter. The bureau also has three boats that monitor New York Harbor. Yeah, Kat, we're going to be exiting the uh, vicinity here. There are certain things that we that we look for. It might be critical infrastructure, uh, meaning the bridges, bridge stanchions, um, or it could be container ships, cruise ships. The boats have detectors that scan for radiation, and they're most concerned about the neutron kind. That's where uh, you're talking about weaponized uh, isotopes, like a plutonium or uranium, things that you would see in a, in a nuclear bomb. And all these years later, the mission remains essentially the same. Neutralize the threat as quickly as possible. Active shooters have been especially deadly from Paris to Orlando to Vegas, so the NYPD has learned from these attacks. When 9-11 first happened, only 17 detectives were assigned to the Joint Terrorism Task Force. That number quickly grew to 100.